Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> guys, we're super excited. Uh, the ban list has just dropped. And, of course, you know we got to have a discussion about it. So, let me introduce the guest that's uh, going to be on here today discussing with us. Uh, the first one I want to introduce is uh, Fusion YGO. If you guys have been watching my channel for a long time, uh, you know I've had him on a few times to discuss just different Goki builds uh, that he has made. And uh, also his uh, Holiday Cup uh, that he did back at the very end of the year, which was super entertaining. Uh, if you guys want to look at what it was like when we were in a combo format, you definitely want to check that out. And then, uh, as you can see from what I've got pulled up here, um, we also have got uh, his ban list prediction, uh, staples that he encourages people to buy. Uh, and then also, um, he's got a new Goki deck profile. But he's also doing budget builds, and I am super excited about that. Uh, so Fusion YGO, welcome, man. It's good to have you back. What's going on, everybody? Uh, yeah, this month is budget month for me, so uh, it's it's something new I'm trying out. I'm trying to have some fun, you know. And uh, the t the staples that he's talking about are all less two dollars or less yes. per copy. Yeah. And he goes through uh, he goes through them in his video, you know, why these are things you should do. I like it. Um, and for me, being a budget guy, that is always where my mindset is. What can I get that's super cheap? So I, I appreciate that kind of thinking. And then if you guys uh, follow the channel, you guys know Grant. Uh, he has been doing extremely well in our online tournaments. Uh, we've had him for several episodes of our Yu-Gi-Oh! News You Might Have Missed. Um, very knowledgeable, very up to date with the meta, and so Grunt, we are so happy to have you on today. Thank you. Yeah, I'm hoping to eventually get around to a channel. I've just been too busy for that. And uh, tournament wise, I'm like Thunder Dragon, doing well in topping, but never getting first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I the think repeat. that's accurate. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you you've been uh you've been very close you've been the bridesmaid but not the bride yet so we'll get you there I, I have much. no doubt so it's it's coming you'll get that dress don't you worry <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and talk about the forbidden cards that were on the list now um i was watching your channel um uh fusion ygo uh and uh, he's also patrick so I was I was watching this Patrick Hello. and I I really liked how you said originally in your banless prediction video you didn't think anything should be banned and uh I completely agreed with you. Well, Why wh I, what do you feel I now? I thought two cards were going to be banned. Say it again. I I only had two cards that I thought were going to be banned. I was 50% correct. I think I'm the only person that predicted Union Carrier getting mm -hmm, banned. mm Mhm. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody, including big channels, predict Union Carrier getting banned, but I thought that was a problematic card. Yeah. I thought that card would be enough to hinder Drytron success. The other card was just because it limits, uh, it, it hinders future card design, and it's literally been used as bait in uh, topping deck lists. And that was part of Plant Verde Anaconda. Those are the only two cards I thought yeah. I needed to get banned. Yeah. Um, and originally, if I, I want to make sure I'm uh, quoting your video correctly, you had thought the format was fine, nothing needed to be hit, but you predicted what you thought would get banned, though, if it was going to get banned. Is that right? Am I understanding correct. your video right? That yeah. is, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I agree with you. I love where the format's at. Uh, I thought it was a great format, the variety of decks that we had. Um, that's why I honestly would have been fine with every card on this list going to just one. Um, but uh, as br was brought up in our video that I had uh, before this, that many decks already play them at once, so would that solve any issues? Um, Grunt, I know you really wanted to see Zexel go. Why? Okay, so Zexel is a personal sore spot for me, and I will tell you this right now is <laughs> there were two reasons. The first reason is, I mean, we've got the elephant in the room right here in the center, Mr. True King of all calamities here. I'm telling you right now, um, if True King got banned, which he did, and Zexel didn't, I feel like we would have seen more decks trying to splash in Zexel as a form of disruption now obviously zexel limits your plays if you're using the numeron package versus vfd 
But, again, unlike VFD, Zexel is worse than Cold Wave. He literally says, no effects at all. And, again, we have the new Utopia support coming in in a few months, which is where we're also getting the new Drytron Ixies. So yeah. I feel like a lot of the hits outside of True King, I feel like a lot of these hits were like, you know, these decks are going to be better. Let's hit them now. And yeah. for Zexel, it's like, the biggest thing for Zexel, and the biggest meme about it is... um. We finally get Argent Chaos Force back, and I've been wanting that card back ever since uh, Gimmick Puppets got their new support as a fun little casual deck to play. And uh, ever since Zexel took that card away from the deck, I have kind of always hated the card, aside yeah. from, you know, losing <laughs> yeah. to it a few times. Yeah, I totally get that. Uh, Patrick, I know you mentioned this in your video, and guys, you got to check out his uh band list reaction video because i like he does a discussion with uh team members uh one of his team members that he has with his team um you thought that this was hitting possible issues in the future do you think that's why they went ahead and got rid of union carrier yeah uh, i think union well union carrier directly hits dry uh, indirectly hits drytron which mm -hmm. i personally think is enough i think hitting ben 10 was overkill yep uh, and yep. i stand by that for a few reasons which i guess we'll get to when we get there but uh union carrier it it going away makes perfect sense it brought buster dragon destruction sword back to three which is fine like i the card is un, unfair but it, it's played in buster blader and I mean, you're already playing a bad deck. Give them something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got things I, to say about that later. I will say. I, I do too, because I've already seen <laughs> but, some virtual world players still finding a way to bring it out. But we'll get to that. <laughs> but go ahead and keep going and, with your thought, Patrick. So losing losing Union Carrier just it 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 helps future card design. Uh, yeah, ABC players are in mourning over the loss of their boy, but yep. their boy was a little too generic. Uh, yes. And being able to use that as a free foolish burial from deck, just a deck thin more. Mm -hmm. Like Union Carrier became a, a, a drop too a, uh, in uh, from your deck in Virtual World, which was just a lot. And it's a machine, which means Medionis works with it. So it just yep. it indirectly hit Drytron enough to where I think the deck is perfectly fair. I think hitting Ben 10 to 1 just took its legs out from under it. Yeah, um, yeah. It... it it's it's wild to me because that's just saying here you want to invest in cards yeah we're gonna make sure it's not worth your while anymore which is the direct opposite of what they've always done in the past yeah so if they're changing up their formula to make the formats consistently healthier yeah great I, but they I, need to be consistent now i like they, what they need you to pick a formula there. and stick to it yeah that was really interesting that you brought that up because that was a big point we talked about uh before we didn't think that that was going to happen. We thought since it was going to drive product that they might limit the cards but not full out uh, ban some of them. So if that's the direction Konami's going in, I am all for it. Whatever leads to a healthier game state is good for me. Uh, but Grunt, do we think that Union Carry will have an errata then uh, to the card so, eventually? And I was just about to bring that up. So... The only big issues we've had with Union Carrier is that it's so generic in what it allows you to equip, which is weird because, again, ABC, for example, which this card is clearly inspired by, um, you know, it's carrying parts of Union Hanger. It's just very weird how generic it is. I can equip Dawn Knight to my Drytron. I can equip, you know, Buster Sword. And... Buster Sword obviously was the big nail in the coffin, in my opinion, for how uh -huh. car, how broken this could get. So, if they want to errata it, literally, ABC players would have a field day if it got errata to equip one light machine monster, which yes. applies to all the Union stuff, and it even includes Photon Orbital for your cute little Galaxy Soldier combos. Right, right. And yeah, you could. Ahead. I think the better thing is to just make it equip only Union monsters from the mm -hmm. deck. Mm -hmm. If you're going to yes. specify, you may as well just make it the strictest possible so it works on the decks it's designed for and nothing else. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what stinks about this card. When I first saw the card, I thought, oh, this is great. This will be great for uh, ABC Dragon Buster players. And then I started to see what you were talking about, Patrick, how it can become a foolish um, I have seen so many zombie world players utilize this card just because it gets their boy into the graveyard and then they get it out on the standby phase. 
So, um, yeah, I, I definitely feel that this needs an errata. Uh, and uh, it's, it's what's best for the card because I think it just takes away from what it was intended to do. So uh, that's why if they can fix it, let's fix it. Um, True King of All Calamities leaving the format. This is interesting to me because this is part of the reason why I think we've gone more to a slower format is because of this card, because players had to have back row to deal with it. Um, Fusion YGO, nope. do you think okay. that we're going to go to players trying to force more combo, even though it looks like Konami wants more control? Um, I know the North American player base, so that's, that's always going to be a thing we're going to deal with. Uh, there are so many people claiming that Dragon Link is now the best deck or, mm -hmm. uh, or, or even Dinosaurs are the best deck, but, and I hope I'm wrong, but I genuinely believe that Elblitch is now tier zero. Oh, I think it's, it's a huge, yes. Maybe. Yes. That, that, uh, and that the reason I, I think that is they didn't take a single hit. Mm -hmm. um, they are a very powerful control deck that can grind any, anybody into the ground now. And worst of all is they have a ton of just get rid of your stuff. Get rid yeah. of your stuff. Oh, and I'll make Zeus because I'm funny. Yeah. Now, it's interesting you bring that up, though, because when I think of Eldlich, I know that if I have the DD Crows ready, you side those in. And if Eldlich is banished, they can't play. There's so much that limits yep. them then. So I'm not sure if right. I'd say it's tier zero, but I definitely think it is the tier one deck right now. Grunt, your thoughts. Here's what I have to say. Eldritch is no Zodiac. And by that I'm saying Eldritch is one of those decks where once people are afraid of it enough to side for it, such as DD Crows and stuff, it's not going to be omnipotent because you're going to have ways to out it. Now, if you're facing some rando who doesn't have any form of banishing, then yes, Eldritch is crazy, but against somebody who doesn't want to lose to Eldritch and has the DD Crows for the matchup, it's like... You get what I'm saying. Unlike oh, Zoo, yeah. where there's like no true counter, there is, there is an Achilles heel to the deck, and it can be pushed. I'm not saying this makes it a horrible deck. I'm just saying that it's one of those things where... The deck can become top tier, but it'll never be tier zero because it'll never be un. You can't. You'll be able to side against it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, it's not in that makes sense to me. Yeah. So because you can properly side for the deck, that will affect it. Um, Fusion YGO. I know that you guys had mentioned some other cards that definitely uh, deal with um, with Eldritch, which was uh, what's that trap card that banishes Imperial Wall? Is that right? You can't banish. Imperial Iron Wall, yeah, That's that it. stops yeah. you from banishing cards. Um, Royal Decree shuts down trap cards, which mm -hmm. shuts down the whole thing. Like there are ways to stop Eldritch, of course. Uh, like of course there are. There has to be. Uh, I, the reason I'm thinking that is just because it's so splashable with other really powerful engines mm -hmm. that it's it's hard to effectively side. You can side against part of it, but you can't side against all of it. Uh, and the other engines, like for example, Zodiac Eldritch. It has access to the Eldritch grind game, plus a Zeus, because why not? That seems yeah. fair. So it, it it just becomes one of those things where Eldritch and Eldritch variants are going to be very difficult to deal with, because yeah. while you may side for the Eldritch, what do you do against the Zodiac stuff then? Uh, I'm not really prepared for that. Yeah, yeah. Or, and, yeah. and that's what scares me. is It's not so much just pure Eldritch. My, my fear is that Eldritch and all its variants are going to run rampant, yeah, because the Eldritch stuff gives you a ton of consistency and a ton of grindability, mm -hmm. and then the other stuff just gives you that over the top. Let's 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 murder hobo everything. Yeah, I'm glad you bring that up. Uh, the reason I say that uh, going to the limited list now, um, now we know Benton obviously was the only limited card. However, Dragoon has been in a ton, a ton of decks. Should that have been limited to one, uh, especially with you talking about back row being so prevalent? And I've seen quite a bit of Eldritch lists that play uh, multiple Dragoons. Is this something that is going to become a huge issue for the format? Grunt, what do you think? Um, Here's what I think, um, especially now that we have less stun to worry about, like True King or Zexel. 
I personally am of the under the impression that we can finally see maybe not a full resurgence, but we can see more use with kaiju's. Uh huh. Especially if Dragoon is going to be sitting there. I guess my point with uh, kaiju's is um. That's the one thing that Dragoon definitely fears. So if Dragoon oh, is so omnipotent, I feel like people are ma- like they're making a mountain out of a molehill. I say this because there are so many ways to try and get a kaiju. You could try to pitch a slumber to search a kaiju. You could have a kaiju in a dark deck and run a war. So like, you know, Radiant. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like there's just enough ways to get a kaiju to out Dragoon if Dragoon really is your... Um, problem i feel like there's more outs to dragoon than people are giving it credit for and i say this because with zexel gone uh the guru variants you're gonna see out there now are gonna probably be more along the lines of your dragoon guru setups with summon limits so i understand people's frustration with that i guess what i'm trying to get at though is that um even if you limit dragoon you're still gonna have to find a way to get around it and i don't think banning it's the way to go either no i don't think it should be banned um, I would have been fine if the card was just uh, limited. Um, Fusion YGO, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think Dragoon isn't as good as it was hyped up to be. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I've, I on have that. stood by. I, so I've said that for a while. I, I think Dragoon is a good card. It's a powerful card. Uh, I'm not gonna like sugarcoat it and be like, hey, this card's bad. It's because it's not. That's stupid. Um, it is probably the most powerful individual control card of the format. Uh-huh. The problem is, is you have to run a bunch of bad cards um, that don't do anything if you draw them, like they're just bricks in the hand, uh-huh. uh, in order to make it. And then to out it, kaijus exist, yeah. as have already been disclaimed. Um, if you have to use the Red Eyes Fusion to hard summon it, Right, then you're you locked don't out. Get a, turn, you don't get yeah. a summon. Yeah. So cool. Um, it's at worst two pops and then a gate. Yeah, the boost is a pain in the neck, but I mean, there are decks that aren't at full power that have natural outs to it. I'm sure that your that the competitive decks have outs to it. Uh, Zeus is a hard out to it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Dingirsu outs it. Um, Ice Dragon's Prison outs it. Like there are plenty of outs to this card. Yeah. I, and if you solemn strike the red eyes fusion, well, there goes their turn. If you ash the red eyes fusion, there goes their turn. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If they use Verde Anaconda's effect to become it, you ash the Verde Anaconda. Now they've got two bricks in deck. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good Crisis point. averted. Yeah, that, that's There a are enough point. ways to just stop it from sticking. Like, is it a good card? Yes. Is it meta-defining? Does it need to be touched? I don't think so. I think... If you're going to hit anything for the Dragoon package, you just hit Red Eyes Fusion to one, and there you go. Problem yeah, solved. Yeah, that's a great idea. Good point. Good point. I'm uh, I'm under the impression that Dragoon is going to fall to power creep. And what I'm saying is, I think that with cards like Dragoon, Konami is going to be pushing for more forms of non-targeting, non-destruction removal, because... Mm-hmm. Power creep can only go up. I can imagine. I can imagine, especially after seeing cards like Lightning Storm, them bringing back Harpy's Feather Duster. I can imagine even stronger removal options to try and you know mm-hmm. keep people buying in the game. And I know it sounds crazy, like oh, a dark hole that banishes, but I don't think it's crazy. I feel like they could do that at some point. And again, Dragoon may not be targetable, but he can still be banished. He can still be tributed. Like he's not invincible i guess yeah. my point is that if you're scooping if you're scooping to dragoon then it, it's the same argument you give me for mystic mine mm-hmm. if, you, if you're mm-hmm. losing to dragoon you should build around worrying about dragoon if he's yeah. that big of an issue yeah so you just or, need to build or, that or there's this great new invention there's a great new invention in the game and it is the most important skill for Yu-Gi-Oh players period bar none the side deck yes right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes exactly yeah and i think like... <laughs> that is the hardest thing for players is how do i properly side deck i think a lot of players take i have a, a list. video for that i know you do that's why i was going to just plug that <laughs> <laughs> um i think that that's very difficult for a lot of players because they just look at a list they don't look at the side deck list or they're not sure how to properly side when they even bring the same side deck options. So, uh, guys, make sure that you do check out uh, Fusion YGO's uh, side decking video. He does a really nice job 
just really breaking down everything you need to know to be competitive in this game. Uh, so you'll definitely want to check out his channel. Uh, at the end of the discussion today, I'll make sure I have his uh, information again for you. Now, I also. Oh yeah, go ahead, Grant. I want to say one quick, one one quick, one quick thing. And I'm comparing this guy to VFD now because. VFD, in my opinion, was a much worse control card than mm -hmm. Dragoon, and the reason yeah. why is because you, um, especially with VW, VW um, and Chuchi can go can go sit in the corner for how naughty they were, popping their VFD to make sure you couldn't stop it. And right. um, what I'm going to say is that if you're that concerned about Verte Anaconda, there's multiple ways to stop it. Mm -hmm. um, Ash Blossom can stop pitch in perm obviously can stop it and yeah. i'm pretty sure there's multiple ways you could disrupt the strategy and again i feel like it's easier to stop than zexel or obviously um, Dragoon and it, i like, think I verde know. dumps as cost if it does dump as cost then yeah forget what i said but i guess my <laughs> point is that verite can be stopped with imperm which imperm yeah. should probably see more use in my opinion if you're that yeah, worried you're about not... going second yeah, sign it, main it, and if you can't afford it, Forbidden Chalice and yes. Effect Veiler do the same thing. Yes, exactly. I, run Effect Veiler. Yes. People need to run Effect Veiler more these days. Yes, and again, this is what I appreciate of the budget options. So if you're watching this and you hear Imperm, I know what you're thinking. Oh, gosh, it's a $20 card. Forbidden Chalice does the same thing. Uh, it, it it's It's a little different. You'd probably ha you'd have to set it, but it is a cheap option. And then, of course, you have Effect Veiler. So which of course you could use multiple times if you need to. So you do have budget options if you need it. Now, uh, we had talked about Benton. So uh, Benton uh, going to one, um, Patrick, what do you think about it going to one? Does I still think Drytron's gonna be really good. Um, are you I... fine with it going to one? I don't like it. I think it's, I. I think it's <laughs> aggre overly aggressive. And it's not because, like, I'm a big dry tr Look, I'm playing Eldlich. Uh-huh. And I'm complaining that Eldlich is perfectly unscathed. But I understand why. it shouldn't. I don't think it should have been touched. But, like, they've crippled the two best control the combo decks of the format. Uh-huh. Not really. A virtual World could still play. Yeah, Virtual but World's good. They've taken yeah. their legs out from under yeah. them. They're just like, oh, you want to play? Now nah, we're gonna break your knees. You've been out for three months. We're, we're gonna we're gonna lightly smack on the wrist virtual world that's been out for six months. But you, we're gonna break your knees. Let's be honest here. You you've seen all the jokes, whether it's a big YouTuber or some rando who wants to talk about how the meta has been going, who doesn't even have a channel like like me. And here's the thing, <laughs> Drytron can be oppressive, but it's also not nearly as um broken as some other top tier decks have been yes. and you never really saw it topping as much recently um, yes. in my opinion in my opinion hitting the deck hitting this versus i don't know um vw eldlich dragon link mm -hmm. it just seems kind of odd to hit drytron extra i would have maybe semi'd it but even li fully limiting it like some people are happy me i'm just saying yeah, yeah, I'll get my revenge when I get my new XCs, and then you can keep <laughs> them Well, I, I just, I don't, I, I think Drytron's good. I think it's a really good thing for Ritual decks. The problem is, is that now they don't have one, the one, their, their best consistency card, the, the best card of their deck is now at one, in my opinion. I think yeah. Ben's well, is the best card in their deck. Interesting. It's not perfect, but there are ways to fix it, um... One example yeah. is, like, people are now starting to think, okay, well, let's run pre-prep, and if we want to cycle our Cyber Angel back, we'll just run the old Herald of Perfection package, and uh, mm -hmm. even now, without without Benton, we're like, okay, well, we'll just run an Edatin or two. Yes, and we're finding other spells. ways, and yeah. Like, in my opinion, we... Drytron players have less of a leg to stand on than VW do, because mm -hmm. VW didn't really get hit. VW yeah. just got taken... had their big... Well, the VW big had boy taken out, away. exactly. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I really feel that Virtual World is going to be fantastic. Um, shout outs to Casey Which Games. Like. Uh, he has already found a way to completely demolish a person's hand with the Virtual World deck. So, uh, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, so, sucks. Casey Games has already found options that are going to still be very good. 
Um, so you guys will definitely want to check out his channel at some point because uh, I think he's going to post more information on that. It's scary, honestly scary, uh, when he was describing uh, it. So, and I'm not throwing any salt at anyone. I'm just saying that when, and we've talked about this, when I play this game, I like to be able to have somewhat of a back and forth. I know that's hard to ask yes. for in the modern meta, Yeah. but we've had metas in recent years where it's still been back and forth. Heck, Eternal format, as annoying as Sky Striker was, at least it was back and forth and back and forth. And to me, VW is probably the one deck I have hated the most in the last six months that mm -hmm. I never expected to hate, and that's because it's literally don't play dot deck and that's because i'll be there in a second and that's because you either um you have you had vfd and then you popped it with chuchi and then you said yeah no you can't do anything goodbye yeah and now it's like instead of having a hand that you can't use now they're saying no hand at all the only way i can think of outing the hand loop variant is nibiru uh -huh. so it's possible yeah but it's like nibiru like, if you don't open Nibiru, you don't open the Imperm to try and stop him somehow. I just, yeah. I don't know. Then it becomes Hand loop a decks nightmare. have always been bad for me, and we're not getting an emergency ban list anytime soon unless they want to ban Cloud Castle. Right. Now, it's interesting you bring up Cloud Castle. That was what KC Games had brought up in his ban list. Uh, he felt that Cloud Castle was the correct hit. He thinks that's the yep. main issue with the deck is Cloud Castle. It needs to go. 100%. 100%. I mean, it's going to become one for sure. Well, uh, oh, good. Patrick, it's, you're it's back. A multi -tool. Oh, he is back. Yeah, cool. okay. Um, Patrick, yeah. It, cut, yeah. it, it cut back. It cut out on me. Oh, okay, so, go back to what you were saying I gotta move then. My, uh, I got to move my setup real quick. Oh, you're fine. You're go good. ahead then, Patrick. What was your original thought that you were saying before uh, we were checking on the stream? Oh, no, you're good. Um... Jeez, I forget where I was. Oh, so yeah, it, it, it feels like they have creators re like regret like they do with Pendulum. Mm -hmm. So Pendulum always gets some kind of like really weird over the top hit. Yeah. Like this time last year, they hit Electromite to zero and they limited Servant. Servant getting limited made perfect sense, but hitting Electromite like, yes. oh, you want to play Pendulum? We're going to take away the only card that works for Pendulum. The only decks. card. Bye -bye. Yes, I completely agree with you on that. What were they thinking? And Right, so so with that, they've done the same thing now to Ritual. Like, every time good Ritual stuff comes out, let's cripple it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Who here fondly remind, remembers uh, Necroz format? And and that's fair, except I don't think Drytron, the fairy variant at all, is even close. That's fair not even fair. remotely the same problem. Like, hitting Necroz made sense, but now they're doing it again to a deck that barely got to see the light of day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, good it's, points, uh, guys. It, good points. And if they were going to go, if they were going down the route of we want to stop degenerate formats, let's hit Ben 10 instead of hitting Vanity's Ruler. Yeah. Vanity's Ruler yeah. is the real problem. You know, I, that I was wondering about that. Should we have hit Vanity's Ruler for that deck? Because that that's what really cripples a lot of decks is that you can't special summon uh, unless you're playing like True Draco or something. Um, yeah, so that that's a really good question. Grunt, do you think that's maybe what the correct hit should have been? Uh, making sure that we hit the Vanity's maybe. Ruler. I, Vanity's Ruler is funny because I like it's... Hmm. It, it's it's pretty much the opposite of Dragoon. It's vulnerable to a lot of removal options, but you also can't kaiju it because it stops you from special summoning. So I get the idea. It's uh, it's like summoning your own version of Vanity's Emptiness, but it has less removal options. And I get why people hate it. Um, but even then, I seem like even when I'm not saying I, it's the right hit. I'm just saying like if that's the route they were trying to go down get rid of the get, hit the problem at the source not the stuff that searches I, it i guess my argument mm. here is this vw was always gonna crap out that vfd whether you liked it or not <laughs> whereas drytron even when i had even when i had triple benton i wasn't consistently summoning vapor it was nice to mm. have but most of the time i'd have to normal summon the manju and 
Well, you get the idea. Vanity's ruler was not like it's not like I'm always ending on the same board with ruler. Yeah, no, I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. I'll be back in a second. Makes sense. Um, uh, and and that's why everybody moved to the Herald of Ultimateness build anyway. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Let Let's go ahead and move on to some misses here, possibly. Um, what about Harpoor? Uh, I was really surprised with how much people are calling for this, the Orcus uh, players in the community, I'm really surprised that they didn't at least try it back at one. What do you think the fear is with that, Patrick? Uh, they fear me, because I love Orcus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly, I have no idea. I, I, like... <laughs> I love Orcus, and anybody that's followed my channel for any length of time has heard me harp about this. I d Before the ban list where the Harpoor got banned, I called that Harpoor and Orcus was not the problem, and I stand by that to this day. Uh -huh. um, I, I think that they're, they're afraid of... I think they're afraid of spicing it up. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that that's what it is, is they just they fear shaking things up too much, and I think the biggest reason for that is the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest reason that they don't bring a lot of stuff back is because they want to promote sales during the pandemic so that they can keep their doors open and their card game going. Okay. okay. I, I genuinely believe that that's why more things aren't coming off the ban list. Interesting. Interesting. Grant, your thoughts. Oh, Did we lose him? Grant? Oh, we might've lost him for a second. Um, so moving on. No, and I understand what you're saying. It makes sense to me. Uh, moving on to what, uh, uh, to another card with us having so much back row, what about possibly bringing back Heavy Storm to one? Do you think that was a missed opportunity? Uh, no, because <laughs> Heavy Storm blows up your own back row. Could you picture Eldritch with being able to blow up their back row for free? Right, right. <laughs> I like that sounds like a fun that. format to me. Let's do it. <laughs> So do you think then that we should have had other forms of removal that should be in this format then with so much back row nowadays? I don't know. I think if you weren't going to like uh, with so much back row, like I think red reboot should have been tested at two. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think like that makes sense to maybe go to two. Um, that's an option they could have done. Um, I think Harpy's Feather Duster is stuck at one because Lightning Storm is a fairer version of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. So with Lightning Storm, with three Lightning Storm, three Cosmic Cyclone, three Twin Twisters, three Mystical Space Typhoon, if you want to be really cheap, um, mm -hmm. there's plenty of back row removal. If you're losing to back row, there, I mean, there's a really staple five cards you can just run, five or six cards you can run in your side deck or even in your main deck, and it's just really easy to run. And that yeah. would be Cosmic Cyclones, because it works against Eldritch better than Twin Twisters does. Mm -hmm. Free life lesson. Harpy's Feather Dust here, nukes the back row. Lightning Storm, Pancratops, Red Reboot. Those are all the, per that, there you go. You have literally everything you need to say, no, you're not playing back row today. Yeah, yeah. No, makes sense. Um, makes complete sense. And, and and like the the same thing he said about like if you're losing to this, there are ways to to out it in clear, easy, obvious ways to out it. It's the same thing with back row decks. If if you're losing to them, why are you losing to them? How can you? What are in your forty card, sixty card, whatever list? How many of those cards one deal with back row without being a monster effect? Because that's important. Because there's a lot of ways to just say no to monster effects. Yeah. So what ways do you have to out it? Are you planning for it? What's the math? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's go ahead and move on now to the un unlimited list because I thought there was a lot of good stuff here. Uh, first of all, I'm happy for the Phantom Knight players that uh, Rusty came off. I think they have got to be thrilled that that happened. Um, I'm happy for Firewall Dragon that it got the errata. Uh, and I like that they put that you can't play the old version until the new version is officially released. That's good. Props to you for that, yep. uh, Konami. That needed to happen. Um, and, uh, it's an interesting list. Some of these cards, I, I think it's about time they came off. 
So, for example, uh, Ignister, uh, the Blaster Draco Slayer, it's a great card. Um, one that I've used uh, for many years being a Pendulum player, so I was happy to see that come off. Um, but what about Dragon Buster Destruction Sword? Uh, Grunt, are you back with us? Oh, I don't think he is. Patrick, are you still there? I'm still here. Okay, okay. So, Patrick, I saw a version of Virtual World, and I can't remember which Xyz monster they used, but they were still able to bring out Dragon Buster. But what you uh, finished on was basically your only interruption was the trap of the deck. Uh, is it? I say Choo Choo, but that's not Choo -chi. right. Choo Choo, thank you. It's so. Uh, yeah, no yeah, so Chuchi, it ended up being on there with Dragon Buster, uh, Destruction Sword, now that it's come off the list. Um, do you think that this card is still okay to be off? Because I agree with you that if it's stuck in a Dragon Buster build, it's really good. But if other decks are going to find ways to abuse it, should it maybe be off if people end up abusing it this format? I think they should have tested it at one. Yes. Um, to start. <laughs> yes. Um, like, but without Union Carrier, the, ending on one interruption and no extra deck, very manageable. Um, because it, the Chuchi is a pop. It's not a negate. So Cosmic Cyclone, and their turn's over. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they lose. Yeah. Uh, it's a good card. It's a powerful card. Uh, but you have, or you should have, enough ways to stop it where it just doesn't matter. Okay, um, I think it's fine. I like that approach. Uh, without, with Union Carrier, it's, okay, I can naturally do this. Oh, and I can set up, like, a, a million and a half negation. Yes, or, yes. Uh, An Omni negate and a bounce and a this and a that. Like, yeah, yeah Dragon Link using it, really unfair. Yeah. It being used in decks where it's going to, they're literally vomiting everything into it. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Because then I just have to deal with it. Not a problem. Yeah, and I, I think you're right with that. That as long as there's just one thing I really got to deal with, maybe two, I can do that. It's when I have to deal with, like you're saying, an entire board of negations. <laughs> Which, yeah. that's where it's very difficult to have fun and play the game. So, yeah, so I, I am 100% I am right there with you. Okay, now, some of the cards that were on the list... Um, I did not know. So this rank up magic uh, agent uh, chaos force. Do you know yep. what this card does? I don't Do even know what this does. So the reason oh. why chaos force. You're back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. So so here's the thing. Obviously, the Argent chaos force was meant for decks like gimmick puppets because of how it works. Now, the idea... I don't remember the exact combo, but the idea, I think, was that it was recurrable, so you would be able to pitch it with something, um, and then you would summon a Dark Xyz that was like rank 5 or higher, you would add it back to your hand, and you'd be able to instantly go into um, Etop Exexel because you had a consistent way to get to it. So... That was the issue with it. So essentially how it's supposed to work is that you um, would rank up like one gimmick puppet, then you would summon another one, and then you would get it back to your hand and you'd get to do essentially two rank ups with one card in one turn. Oh, wow. Okay, that makes sense. That was, that was the intended use. And then, of course, people were like, well... And again, I'm not an expert on this because I didn't play during this format. Uh -huh. um, I just know that there was an abusable combo where... You would pitch Argent Chaos Force for Zexel, and uh -huh. there was a consistent way to get it back to your hand because there were some other Xyz people were using. Okay. Someone could probably uh, quote me on that. Okay. It, and have you? Uh, did you know about this, Patrick? Were you playing at that time? Um, I remember the combo vaguely. I had just gotten into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh at that time. Um, so I I don't re I didn't really see it, but I had heard about it. Okay. I can't speak on it in any kind of way, really. Okay. Well, it was something that I did, I've did. i never even looked at. So we got into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! around 2015, 2016. 
Um, and I'd never even seen this card. I, I've I've never even played against somebody who used it. So uh, this was completely foreign to me. But uh, it'll be interesting now that it went from forbidden to un unlimited. What might uh, happen with it? Uh, will we see that power creep has okay. just made it too much? I don't I know. I got it. I figured out what it was. Oh, okay. Go ahead. So ironically, it was a pendulum deck that broke this combo. Oh. So if you remember, so if you remember, um, so pendulum decks after um they banned this um were using Norito because he was a free spell of trap negate with a rank six body, a rank six body. Uh huh. So instead of summoning Norito, what they would do is they would summon Beatrice. Beatrice oh. would pitch Rum, and then um. There was a way to add it back with its own effect, um, and you would summon a, a rank four Utopia monster because again, Pendulum decks. This was like a few years ago, um, so this might have been pre-Link. Yeah, so um, this was probably when we were in uh, uh, the four format. They were able to consistently bring out Beatrice, a rank four Utopia, yeah. and then they would have to they'd be able to bring back the Rum pitch, and they would summon Zexel. And if you think of how consistent Zexel was. With Numeron, even then, you still needed some pieces. As far as I can tell, this was incredibly consistent in Pen Magician because Pen Magician was crazy consistent mm -hmm. when it was at full power. Mm -hmm. No, that that makes complete Did you sense. Play guys. During I, oh, never mind. I know what it is. Okay, okay. So let me double check this real quick. I, I was around for Pepe, uh, not very long. Um, but, uh, I, and that the reason I wasn't, my son and I were just really getting into it. And so everyone was talking about how broken the deck was. It's tier zero, which I knew what those type of terms meant, uh, because of my fighting game community background. Um, but I didn't know the power of it yet because we were playing stuff that was so old. It was getting destroyed no matter what. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, when the Monarch deck dropped, everyone told me it was because of Pepe. They were so worried about the extra deck mechanic, uh, you know, being able to just flood your field with so many cards that they felt that was the answer was that uh, that Monarch build, which I loved the Monarch build. Like that is hands down one of my favorite decks I ever played was Monarchs. It was just so much fun. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, so it it's definitely a format that uh, I did not get to experience full blown. So I figured out because I looked this up, and it was because I was misreading. So I was assuming that it needed to be dark. So here's the combo. You and again, I don't know the extent of the whole combo, but here's a good idea because pen ma pen magicians were able to very consistently get out a rank six, rank four bodies. So, oh yeah. yeah. You, you would get out your Beatrice, you would pitch the rum, you would rank up Beatrice into Gaia Knight, the Thunder Charger, and then because you Xyz summon a rank 5 or higher Xyz, rum would add itself back to your hand, you would summon a Utopia, pitch the rum, and you would get Zexel. Oh. So essentially, so with, just, uh, so with just a rank 6 and a rank 4, you were able to get Utopic Zexel out, which with Pen Mag back then was yes, very consistent. Yes. So and now that Zexel's gone, they don't fear that combo anymore. That makes complete no. sense. No, you don't think that's it? Well, no, I was saying no. That's exactly why they um they, they don't have reason to fear Zexel because Zexel is probably the only card I can think of off the top of my head that abuses rank ups oh. that way, where it's like yeah. pitch a rank up from your hand to summon this card. Like they're probably not gonna do that again simply because of rum, unless they make it a balanced card. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go back to some of the other cards uh, on the list here. I know in our last discussion video, uh, the guests I had on, we had talked about the True King's return would be fine to come back at three. Uh, I'm okay with that for sure. Like I said earlier, Rusty coming back I thought was great. Grunt, I never got to hear your thoughts on Dragon Buster Destruction Sword coming back. Uh, Patrick and I were just talking about how, um, uh, how if that's what you end on is just basically getting out that card in one interruption you can deal with that. What are your thoughts with it being uh, back at three? 
So what exactly did you discuss for potential combos with this card? Because yeah. there are a few combos I've already been testing. Yes, and I saw uh, I saw a virtual world build where uh, they and I can't remember what Xyz num number it is, but it brings this card out, uh, and then it stops them from being able to uh, special from the extra deck that turn. But all it had uh, was the uh, uh, Chuche or. Choo-choo, or how do I say that again? Choo-choo, choo-choo. We all know what you're talking okay. about. Choo-choo. <laughs> uh, the trap. That's what they had, the trap. So that was their only way. That was on the field, and they only had one form of interruption for your main deck monsters. That's what I've seen. Have you seen any other builds utilizing this already? So I haven't seen them using this build, but I have heard whispers of different combos. So like Dragon Link, for example. Dragon Link loves this card, and it's because of a very obscure... So if you remember, part of the reason why Dragon DMZ Link was... Dragon. DMZ Dragon. Mm. Um, so if you want to try and pull that up, DMZ Dragon has a very specific effect that happens to synergize with Dragon Link, because not only can you special summon DMZ Dragon, but its effect literally says... You can target one level four lower dragon in your graveyard and one dragon you control. Equip that monster in your graveyard to that monster as an equip spell that makes it gain 500 attack. So you essentially, now I don't know how their combo would do it, but the idea is you could do LP, you could pitch it with something and special summon it with Pisty. Um, yeah. Protor. Protor 2. Oh, There's yeah. ways that for you to get DMZ out and then... All, for all you care, you could equip that DMZ to your Borloed Savage mm -hmm. or to anything you have out, Red MD, whatever you're keeping on your side of the field. And yeah, so DMZ has that. Um, and I was kind of saying this is a joke, but it can happen. Um, the new Cyberdark support, which we'll go more in depth on that, I'm sure, in the future. But, um, we will, yeah. That's that, going to be that, in a Yu-Gi-Oh! News United guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That new fusion of theirs literally says you can target one card in either graveyard, equip it to this, so Cyberdark could easily just run one combi of the buster. Yep. Because there are multiple ways to pitch it, and then they yes. pitch it, and uh, they equip it to the fusion. You've got a 5,000 body that's unaffected by activated effects that stops your opponent from special summoning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, makes sense, makes sense. Oh, you guys still there? And yeah, I'm still here. Okay, go ahead, Patrick. Uh, and, yeah. And, and while that might be strong, like with Dragon Link, it does require a little bit of resource use, um, which is fine by me. And the other thing is, is that like what Dragoon does, what Dragoon's immune to, you already have the outs. You're already running them. You have to run Kaiju's to out Dragoon anyway. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in for a dime, in for a dozen, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I I think it's a good card. I think it's powerful. I'm sure people are going to find ways to abuse it. Um, like I said, I think it should have probably been at one. Test the waters, but whatever. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, we're we're gonna have to deal with it for at least four months. Uh, worst case scenario is it's broken and degenerate, and somebody figured out how to break it. And best case scenario, I'm right, and it's not a problem. Yeah. No. And. I'm hoping that will be the case. I think it's going to be... That's why I agree with what you said to begin with, Patrick. It should have been at one. Just to make sure that it doesn't get too crazy. So, uh, we'll see what happens as players test. Um, the last yeah, card... Oh, wouldn't do anything. Well, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting to see what players do. Um, let's look at the very last card on the list. Uh, with the new Ice Barrier Structure Deck... Are we surprised that the Tiger King was unlimited? No. Okay. It doesn't uh, do anything now. <laughs> so, guys, we are going to go ahead and move now to the missed opportunities at the ban list. Uh, so, the one that surprised me the most, again, was that Eldlich didn't have any kind of hit. With uh, Scarlet Sanguine, I really thought that they would at least hit something that was consistency-based with the deck. But Grunt, why do you think that it was okay not to hit the deck? So, again, my opinion on this are that the best decks out there are the ones that don't have any weaknesses, the ones that 
no matter how many holes you try to punch in them, they just keep bouncing back. Yeah. And, and we talked about this earlier, I the stream before, but um, the biggest weakness that you mentioned with Eldritch was things like D.D. Crow yep. or called by was brought up i mean imagine if called by was at more than one. Oh, but, um, it should be yes uh-huh <laughs> and, and there's other and there's other cards too there's other cards too and um, yeah. again i feel like at the end of the day there's just a lot more ways for you to stop eldritch and um mm -hmm. yes it's strong but compared to like what zoo used to be and compared to masterpiece what he used to be like eldritch is a control deck but it's not super super oppressive in my opinion and mm -hmm. again you can punch holes in it i've had people complain to me because they're like, I'm running two Eldritch, and that's not enough, because they get banished, and I lose. And I'm like, there you go. There's an example. Not everyone's managing this deck well enough in the first place, and even those who are, if they're facing someone who knows how to banish them or is running enough banishing stuff, goodbye. You lose yeah. all your golden boys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Patrick, so uh, go ahead and tell us what you think about that. Uh, do you agree that um, with us staying in this controlled environment the deck is still fair enough just to leave it as is i do i i don't think eldlich is i agree with everything grunt just said um the other thing that i have to bring up to it is when people say like oh well it, it needs to go it really doesn't if we take away eldlich what's the control deck of the format yes guru yeah. dragoon <laughs> which look guru's been around for a lot longer um and Altergeist has been around forever, so do we want to go back to the same old, same old, or do we like innovating with this engine that's very powerful mm -hmm. and being able to, uh, you know, have different interactions and have different decks in the format, or do we want to just go back to, you know, Guru Control with a little bit of Altergeist? And yeah. I, I don't know about you, anybody else. I can't speak for anybody else, but I, I like playing the game now. That's why I don't play GOAT format. Uh, oh, take of the video um I, I don't play goat format because i don't want to play a 15 year old game oh that's interesting i, uh, I love goat uh, format that's so interesting i, I, I like the back and years. forth that goat format gives you so that that's oh, interesting that you say that that's fascinating i've already so played that format i lived that format i don't uh -huh. want to do it again <laughs> <laughs> see for me so... i never got to experience it so uh, I kind of like that I have opportunities to play GOAT. So, yeah, that, that's pretty right. interesting. And, and that's cool. Like, I'm happy that people can enjoy that. My thing is, is that I don't live with nostalgia goggles on. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. No, I and get that. with that, it gives me a little bit of clarity. Like, this is a very healthy format now without True King. Like, could it be bad? Yeah, there's a lot of potential for things to go awry, especially with Eldritch. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's, as Grunt said, there's enough ways to stop it, and you're already running them anyway because they work against everything. Yeah. So yeah. Why why threat why hit this more than like why hit it at all? Like, I don't understand. We need to have a control deck in the format. It's just good for the game. Well, and like I said earlier this morning uh casey games uh he firmly believes that these are going to be in the mega 10 and if they're going to be in the mega 10 they're not going to hurt their sales um and if nope. you leave the deck alone there's a very good chance we're going to see something like that happen um you talked about that there's lots of ways to handle it called by the grave if it went to three would have definitely been more opportunities to handle it uh, we didn't talk about yeah. this earlier. Do you think that that might be why they left it at one? Uh, no, I think they left it at one because Konami hates us and they printed it as a common on release. <laughs> and it won't uh, give yeah. them product money. That is nope, legitimately that the only reason I can think that they would not hit. They wouldn't leave it at more than one because it's got a million reprints. It's a very good and powerful card. I don't like the player base. Let's just murder them. <laughs> I'm of the belief I'm of the belief that Konami planned on giving us cross out designator, but then they're like, nah, nah, we can put cross out designator in this set instead, and then they're like, Well, we already have this on the set, ah, we're too lazy to change it. They're not gonna We're gonna put it as an exclusive one. short print ghost rare and ghost <laughs> from the past. 
which hopefully does not happen. Oh gosh, that would be terrible. Um, you know what's bad is you can't outright tell me that I'm wrong. That's uh, right. a freaking oh, yeah. problem, my guy. <laughs> yeah, there, I I can't because unfortunately we're uh, all getting very familiar with Konami's way of uh, conducting business. And uh, yes, I agree. They now have that a this way of a doing common, business. <laughs> Oh, say it again. Uh, yeah. Oh, they do. They definitely do have a way. <laughs> Anything that will push product, uh, they're usually all for. Um, we didn't talk about this earlier. I would like to see Light Stage re uh, return to three. Uh, Grunt, why do you think it's staying off? Why is it just at one? Wait, which one? Say uh, it again. Likes, uh, likes Light Stage, Trickstar Light Stage. Uh, my best guess is that Konami just thinks that what they did was well enough, and they're like, well, if we bring Light Stage back to 3, we could see some experimentation, and do they really want to see a huge shift in the meta when they probably already have a plan on what they want to sell? They don't need to sell Trickstars anymore, because Trickstars have been long sold out, especially uh, if you remember back when Reincarnation was like a $25, $30 card. Yeah, so... yeah. They don't need to milk trick stars anymore. All I wanted to say is, uh, I was trying to say this earlier. It's funny if you think about it because, in my opinion, from how it was for me, Eldwitch was kind of a budget deck because I bought everything on release except for the Golden Wards. And yeah. That was cheap as dirt. And I, I wish I would have done Wards that. When they got yeah. the reprint. I thought there's no way I'll ever play the deck because the Golden Lord's so expensive. Boy, am I kicking myself for that now. Uh, because there's just wanna, so much there my, now. I, I almost want to flip my Eldwind, but I'm wondering who the heck is going to want to buy my Eldwind for $40 who didn't already want to play the deck. Yeah, yeah, great point. You know what, though? There's always somebody on eBay. I am convinced of that. If you have a deck that's meta, somebody will buy it. it it's, it's guaranteed to happen. Um, let's go ahead now and discuss the best decks of the format. Uh, I firmly believe that Eldlich and Zodiac uh, Zeus along uh argumentatively with uh, uh dragon link those are going to be the top three decks of the format um what are some definite rogue or sleepers that you have on your list there grunt i uh i said it once and i'll say it again um the tri-brigade lyrilisk deck without having to worry about vfd and zexel yeah is definitely going to see just as much play if not more play. And I'm telling you, once it tops, the Tri Brigades are somehow going to go up even more and suddenly Fractal is a $30 Ultra. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we'll see. Absolutely. I mean, Borlode Savage was a $70, $80 card at one point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't remind yeah. me. I had to wait for that reprint. Yeah. Well, I got mine luckily out of a 10. So I was real happy when I got mine. Uh, I didn't play it very often, uh, but I really was happy I got it when it was cheap for me that way. Because I, I just don't, I have a personal rule. I typically don't spend uh, too much on cards that are big money cards, uh, just because I'm afraid they're going to lose their value. Um, and then, like you said, with the reprint, it did lose its value. You know, now that, that card is dirt cheap if you want it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that was one I was definitely going to wait on. Um what do you think, Patrick? What are some sleeper cards or sleeper decks for the format? So he already said driver read, and I think that it's going to be one of the most uh, underappreciated and explosive decks. I think he everything he said was 110% correct. Um, but if you don't prepare for it, uh, Shadals can sneak up on you. Mm, good point. And, yeah. And remember... Miscellaneousaurus, our boy, our lord and savior, Misk, has not been touched. Yeah, so, dinosaurs. Is... Uh, I hate dinosaurs. Yeah, I, I really <laughs> think you bring up a good point here. I do think that dinosaurs um, have a very good chance of seeing a resurgence uh, just because um, they, they still don't get hit. Uh, so I think that that's very possible that we could see that uh, because of Miss. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, any other card or any other decks though, Patrick? Like, do you think Goki has a shot in this format? I think Goki is a rogue option just because Power Load Ogre is really dumb. Uh huh. Um, can easily win you some games that you wouldn't expect to. Like, 
Power Load Ogre plus Torrential Tribute or Needle Sealing or even Mystic Mine and Skill Drain, you just don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because uh, it, it doesn't affect him. So you have two 4,000 beat sticks in the generic yeah. combo that I've shown. You have two 4,000 beat sticks, and your opponent is limited to three so three monsters on field at a time with Mystic Mine. Yeah. They can't use monster effects at all. You can Needle Sealing them and nuke their board. Whatever you want, like... It's it's explosive. It can do a lot, um, but it has a lot of weaknesses. It's got a lot of choke points. It can you can cheese out games though because people aren't playing infinite and permanence. Yeah, well, and I think that's going to come back now. I think we're going to see a lot more people playing infinite and permanence now. Uh, now that we've got so. other cards that are um, you know hit, I think that's going to make a resurgence. So oh, I agree. Yeah, so I'm sure many of those players are happy that they have their sets. If they have them, I bet they go up. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I think they're going to go up because, let's be frank here, the only reason I think Imperm saw less play was because VW didn't care if he had Imperm because, yes. again, they would just pop their own VFD and kind of cheat around the problem. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, completely agree, completely agree. Uh, any other rogue decks or decks that you guys think we need to mention? Um, Phantom Knights is actually something you should be mildly prepared for. It's pretty good. Oh, it can okay. do a lot. Um, okay. Yeah, with Rusty coming back to three, yeah, that's a great point. I wouldn't is say. It, I, I don't think it's going to be top tier, but you can cheese thing. You can cheese some wins out with it, and if you don't respect it, you will lose to it. But. If you're siding for anything, any kind of combo deck, if you're siding for Drytron, you're siding for it. If you're siding for, uh, like, if you have Ghost Bells, Skullmeisters, things like that, if you're siding for Eldritch, you're siding for it. Like, yeah. I think, uh, I think, uh, it depends on if you consider it rogue. I think it's kind of like tier uh, 1.5 more than tier point two, but or tier 2.0, but I think, um, Frank kids are obviously a oh, sleeper. Yes. People mm -hmm. like to sit on those. Yep. Um, Guru, I completely forgot about that. With yeah. Pot of Prosperity a thing, obviously it's not the cheapest deck, but Guru's a thing. I mean, someone's brought this up, and I'll say this. No nothing is a more nasty pairing than summoning a Dragoon and activating Summon Limits. So summon to limit oh, your opponent's yeah. plays. Yeah, that's a great so, point. So, and plus you can have Guru itself to flip things down. And yeah, I, yeah. I like, I love Guru, well, but I'm not paying that money for prosperity. It's interesting so. you bring that up. I even at one point saw a Guru, um, oh, I'm losing the cards now, Numeron deck, which I thought was very interesting. Yep. That was a it, fantastic build. I really enjoyed watching that. It was, it was very fun to watch. Um, it's just a shame that uh, it's just a shame that uh, Zexel is dead, obviously, but that just means that they can still run Numeron, I guess, as a draw engine if they're running Memories of Hope. Yes, and for uh, a deck like that, that helps it. I think that's actually a really good card, um, or a good engine to combine Guru with. So, I mean, um, who's ever thought of a plus three as a bad card? Oh, I know, right? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's so good. But, all right. Well, guys, thank you so much again. Uh, I appreciate you making the time and uh, twice in this situation. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, no problem. Again, guys, uh, you want to check out Patrick, uh, also known as Fusion YGO's channel. Uh, notice he's very close to 400 subscribers. He is doing such a great job with his content. Uh, literally, he's got the budget decks. Uh, he does a great job explaining how to play the game. Uh, he also has his uh, uh, ban list reaction and his thoughts. He's got a team that he works with. Um, if you missed the Holiday Cup, it's a great ex a chance to see what that meta was like when we were combo based. There is just a lot of good things that this guy's always doing. Uh, he's definitely worth checking out. Um, and then for Grunt, we again appreciate uh, everything you bring to the channel. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. So both of you, thank you so much. Anytime. Anytime. No problem at all. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. If you'd ever like to follow these podcasts or these group discussions, consider following us on Twitch. 
Thanks again so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. But I wait for your next challenge. I know that you'll be back.